Well, the last time you saw me here at our top secret testing location, the skies were a lot grayer and the cars behind me were a lot bigger. Today, we've got two convertibles, both with V8 engines, one from Ford, one from Chevy, and we're gonna have a great time. We've actually got these convertibles all week, so we're gonna test them in the sun, maybe in the rain, and we're gonna see which one we like the most at the end of the day. Okay, so that's the number one reason I like the Camaro more. <laughs> Both of these cars are wicked fast, man, but there's just something about having 6.2 liters of V8 under my foot. Now remember, this is making a little bit less horsepower, only, four, only 455 horsepower compared to the Mustang's 460, but it's also got 455 pound-feet of torque, so it's way up on torque, and that helps it feel like a muscle car. <laughs> you know, the difference is that the Mustang feels like a modern sports car engine, and this still feels like a sort of lazy, easy speed, old fashioned engine. It's great in a straight line, but it's not as great. Now I know that if you're a spec chart nerd, you're gonna tell me that yes, the Camaro has more torque than the Mustang's V8, and that's totally true, but it's not that much more, and this thing never feels like it's lacking for low end shove or grunt. And the red line is over 7,000 RPM, and the more you wind it out, the more power, the more this engine kind of wakes up. It sort of feels like a very traditional sports car, naturally aspirated engine. And I actually really like that. But it is really nimble and delicate. There's a lot of precision and feedback and accuracy from the car. You know, on this one, for instance, we've got Brembo brakes, and the pedal feel is fantastic. Really firm, easy to modulate exactly how much stopping force you're getting. And of course, a ton of stopping force in a general sense, which is excellent given we've got 460 horsepower to utilize. Now, the fact that this Mustang is around 200 pounds lighter than the Camaro and that it's got IRS out back does not go unmissed. It certainly is a much more sporty feeling car than it ever has been before. The demerits I give it are that it just doesn't feel as communicative as the Chevy, so not quite as plugged in when you're on the road. The Camaro just feels more like a sports car. And absolutely, the convertible, when I have the top down, aids in that feeling. Even uh, when I'm going slower, I'm having more fun because I've got the wind in my hair. The steering is just really nicely weighted and direct on this car. The other thing that helps is that the Brembo braking package on this car does feel strong. So even though the Camaro is a couple hundred pounds heavier than the Mustang, they'll still haul it down with authority. The downfall of the 6 gen Camaro, just like its predecessor, is that it's kind of a pain to live with. For starters, I mean, I have to sit very high so I can actually see out over the high dash and the high belt line. And then that means my head's actually pretty close to this windshield header, which top up or down is annoying. When you look out back, the rear window is super small just because of how chopped the roof line is. And same too over your shoulder. The blind spots are enormous. And this is a car that when I'm changing lanes on the highway, when I'm backing out of a parking space, I constantly find myself thinking, oh yeah, I just can't see a single thing out of it. One of the primary issues with the Camaro is poor visibility. The advantage that it gets for that is that I'm sitting lower in my seat because the car is lower. So things like spillover from the wind um, are a lot lower. I can hear the stereo a little bit better. The heat stays in a little bit more if I'm driving the car in cold weather or the cold stays in if I'm driving it in hot weather. And I just think that the lower seating position helps me as a tall person drive this car more often with the top down. And of course, the same low seating position that I like for driving the Camaro three seasons out of the year, uh, I actually kind of don't like if I'm driving it in day-to-day in -day traffic, especially if I'm in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the highway. It's just so hard to see out of. It makes this car feel really dicey when you're just going back and forth and changing lanes. Both the rear window and the quarter windows are just so much better with the roof up in the Mustang. You know, I can actually see when I'm backing out of spaces or changing lanes on the highway. And to me, being able to see out of a car is a big factor of whether I'm going to enjoy driving it at all. But well, we've been averaging sort of 21, 22 miles per gallon in the Mustang convertible, which I think is actually very good for something with 460 horsepower. This Camaro seems to drink fuel in comparison, right? When you're averaging 16 miles per gallon all the time, that seems like kind of an old fashioned fuel economy thing when you look at what the Mustang can put up. Now, maybe that comes down to driving style a little bit, but it was pretty noticeable to me when I was looking at the trip computer, how much less efficient this thing is than the Mustang. I think the Mustang is easier to drive day in and day out. Now, 
Now for one, again, we're trying not to talk too hard about transmission since they're so different, but we have seen considerably better fuel economy in the Ford with this 10-speed automatic transmission, as you would expect. For another, when I do fold the top, I still have a ton of trunk space in the Mustang. I can put actual stuff back there where the Chevy is lowered to just kind of like a tackle box or something. And you've got to put up this dorky divider if you even want to lower the roof because the roof lowers down into the trunk. Last night it was a beautiful evening. I wanted to put the top down, but I couldn't. I had to pull over, open the trunk, move stuff around and fiddle with that divider first. That was annoying. Living with it as an everyday convertible is where it frustrates me. It's because I can't see out. It's because I can't store stuff. The convertible top, I find much more of a hassle. The power mechanism takes forever because this metal panel has to fold up and then the roof stows down under and it's really noisy. And then you have to use this awkward switch down here to lower and raise the rear quarter windows individually. Just really a nuisance. One of the things that really brought the Mustang down though in my mind is a lot of the convertible stuff. I don't like the top as much. It's a little bit more fiddly. You've got to do a manual lever and then an automatic button to put it down where the Chevy is all automatic. But the dashboard in general, yes, it's got some silly retro touches and everything, but they all kind of work. The mix of materials is really nice in here. There's a lot of things that are really soft to the touch or the metal dials and so on just feel nice and it feels like a slightly more special car. Plus, frankly, it's just more usable. There's space up here for my phone, there's a little storage compartment down here, lots of space in the center console. To me, this is a car that I can easily live with every day, even though it's a two plus two convertible, because I don't find it that difficult to live with the interior and sort of the everyday just driving around things. So it's been a really fun week, Jake, though. We've been dodging the rain, obviously. We've gotten to drive these cars with the tops down and with the tops up, and I think that we've learned a lot, right? Absolutely. You know, and for me, it comes down to really liking the 2018 Mustang a little bit more. It's got these great technologies in it, and it's super usable as your daily driver every day. So I agree completely. The reason why I'm giving it to the Camaro is because ultimately a convertible is a car that I want to take out on the weekend, and this is the car because of the engine and because of the handling that I want to take on a good road on a Saturday afternoon. It's just a little more fun and exciting for you. I totally understand. Absolutely, it's very close. I'm going Chevy at the end of the day, uh, but it was a hard test. So listen guys, if you wanna learn a lot more about both the Chevy Camaro convertible and the Ford Mustang convertible, you can find that out on motor1.com. In the meantime, thanks for watching.